India's Democratic Government. Class 5. Social Studies. By the end of this session, you will learn about Division of State Powers in India, Checks and Balances. India has a federal structure. Division of powers between the center and the states. Union territories. As you read in the preamble to the constitution, India is a democracy. It is a form of government in which a constitution guarantees fundamental rights to all the people. There are fair and free elections and courts where people can go if there is any disagreement. Division of state powers in India. The word state has several meanings. You already know that India has 29 states. This is one meaning. State also means a country that is controlled by one government. The Indian state has many responsibilities and duties. The constitution gives the state several powers to carry out these duties. The constitution has divided these powers between three different branches. The legislature. This makes the laws. These have to be fair and should follow the directive principles of state policy. The executive. This makes sure that the laws are properly followed. It also makes policies, which must follow the directive principles. The judiciary. These are the courts. They make sure that laws are properly understood. They also use the laws to decide any disputes that are taken to them for settling. Checks and balances. To check means to correct something. Balance means that things exist in equal amounts. The Indian system is designed in such a way that the three branches of the Indian state and also the Indian people can act as a check on each other. This makes sure that power is not misused. This is called a system of checks and balances and is very important part of democracy. India has a federal structure. India's central or union government has its offices at New Delhi. Each state also has a government. This is a federal structure of government. Federal means a system of government in which the states in a country look after their affairs. But a central government also looks after some things. The president of India or the Rashtrapati is the head of the country. Similarly, the governor or Rajchipal is the head of a state. There are legislatures at the center and in the states. Let us see the similarities and the differences between them. At the center, the central legislature is called Sansad or parliament. It has two houses, these are the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. Members are elected to the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha from every part of the country. They are called members of parliament or MPs. In the state, in most states, the legislature has only one house, called the Legislative Assembly or the Vidhan Sabha. Seven states have a second house called the Vidhan Parishad or the Legislative Council. Members are elected all over the states. They are called MLAs. Member of Legislative Assembly. Parliament has important powers. It makes laws for the whole country. Keeps a check on how the executive branch at the center functions. This is done by asking questions or the discussions. Controls how the executive branch will get and spend money. The executive branch presents a budget in parliament. The Lok Sabha discusses it and agrees to it through a vote. The state legislatures have similar powers. They make laws for their state. Keep a check on the functioning of the executive branch through questions and discussions. 
approve the state budget, which the executive branch presents to the Vidhan Sabha. It is only agreed to after a discussion and a vote. The executive The executive branch at the center or at the states, is usually referred to as the government. After an election to the Lok Sabha, the party that has the largest number of MPs or MLAs, forms the government. Though the resident is the head of country, and the governor is the head of a state, the actual power is with the government, because its members have been elected by the people. The executive branch is similar at the center and in the states. The head of government at the center is the prime minister. And in the states, it is the chief minister. They choose their ministers, who are called the Council of Ministers. The government, the executive branch at the center, and in the states, has important functions as given above. Ministers make sure that the policies of their government are carried out. Governments plan and present laws for discussion and approval, to the parliament or to the Vidhan Sabha. The government also prepares the budget and decides the taxes that people have to pay. Unlike the legislature and the executive, the judiciary of the entire country is one system. It is like a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is the Supreme Court. It is the highest court and is located at New Delhi. Its head is the Chief Justice of India. High courts are the middle level. There are 24 high courts and, each has a chief justice as its head. At the lowest level, there are district courts. There are several hundred district courts in India. The responsibilities of the judiciary are to protect the rights and freedoms of Indians, to explain the meaning of the constitution when it is not clear, to deliver justice to make sure that people get fair treatment, to settle disputes according to the law. The constitution explains how power should be shared between the union and state governments. For this, it has three lists. Union list, responsibilities of the union government. For example, the railways, the defense of India, and the foreign affairs state list responsibilities for the state for example the police law and order within the state and transport and roads within state concurrent list responsibilities that are shared by the states and the union government like education electricity or forests and wildlife the union territories are governed directly by the union government, in the name of the President of India, through an administrator for each union territory. Two union territories, Puducherry and the National Capital Territory of Delhi, have legislators. India is a huge and functioning democracy. A major reason for this is the care, discussions and wisdom of the members of the Constituents' Assembly. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe my channel, and do not forget, to hit the bell icon to stay updated. Your comments and suggestions are valuable to us.